For most people, video games are just a hobby, a pastime, a way to do things they can't do in real life. But now, a video game is about to change all that. Over 53,000 people competed online in Gran Turismo 5, exclusively on PlayStation 3, for a shot at becoming a professional race car driver. Now, the fastest 32 players in the country have been brought together by Sony and Nissan to prove they have what it takes to turn their dreams into reality. Welcome to Florida and the first U.S. GT Academy National Finals. To make it here is an absolute dream. It's uh, beyond all my wildest expectations. The event itself is nerve-wracking because you know all these guys are at the same level and it's kind of anyone's game. Some of these guys are like really, really fast, so I'm just excited to be here racing against them. It's, it's really hard. You just gotta be in attack mode the whole time. From virtual to reality, the next step towards a life-changing opportunity begins right now. Gentlemen, start your engine. This has just exceeded all expectations. We had over 53,000 entrants try to qualify for the opportunity to come here to Orlando and have the chance to become a real race car driver. At the national finals, it's no longer about driving solo time trials in the comfort of your living room. There are no do-overs here. To make it through, the 32 finalists will have to go head-to-head -head in live races and win. It's a lot more competitive with four people out there. I mean, you gotta be smoother, you can't run into them. It makes everything a lot more difficult. <laughs> you know, I think all of us know our way around a racetrack and how to go fast. It's all about just kind of performing on the spot, under pressure. You want to be consistent, that's the word. Um, in the time trials, you can go hard and you can spin off course and uh, just, you know, retry. There's no retries in this. It's, it's on. You got five laps to get it done without mistakes. The stakes are extremely high. The top 16 players that emerge from Orlando will move on to Silverstone, England where they will compete behind the wheel of real Nissan race cars to be the 2011 GT Academy champion. I mean, any one of us could steal a race at any time. Okay. You know what I mean? But some people win more than others. If you're in the lead, the nerves are gonna happen. There's gonna be contact in the first corners. Whoever can overcome from mistakes will be the one that ends up going to Silverstone. The races are won by people driving consistently, but the inverse of that is that, you know, the, the wrecks are what pretty much count people out here. <laughs> I lost the rear of the car a little bit, went to correct, overcorrected and shot the car straight off into the grass. Was able to hold it, but the guy in third just went right around the outside. So the hole that I've dug myself is just going to keep me focused and make sure that I do what I've got to do to make it through the next round. Quite frankly, it started out as something that was a game. Now, if you talk to these finalists here in Orlando, They'll tell you it's not a game, it's a simulator. They'll get a little defensive about it. They'll say it is a simulator because it is truly, and it truly has become a legitimate filter and a barometer for who can actually race in the real world. I was breaking so early into that and make sure I wasn't gonna stuff it. As you're looking at that first wall, you can thread that needle just fine. I freaking bend it. That's a hard corner right there. Looking at the success of Lucas Ordanes, he was the GT Academy winner for Europe and he was a business school student one week and all of a sudden three weeks later he's a national uh, race car driver. In fact he was just part of the team that finished second at the 12 hours of Sebring here in Florida last weekend so we hope to find uh, the next Lucas Ordonez here in the United States. GT Academy has to give me the chance to be a professional driver and I never expected to be you know at this level competing in US and Europe and then China this year it's it's amazing. Lucas Ordonez was on hand to help encourage and give his thoughts about the competition. They are really good guys. My tip is to try to forget the cameras, try to forget everything because it's not the same to drive here than playing at home alone with your steering wheel, with your screen. It's not the same. At the end of each of four rounds of racing, the bottom four players are eliminated until only 16 remain. The racing is extremely competitive 
but the competitors remain friendly and courteous both on and off the track. With each passing round, the field of competitors narrows and each race gets more intense. They must stay focused, sharp, and consistent. The stakes just went up. You know, I just gotta have smooth inputs. I gotta be patient. I gotta capitalize when other people make mistakes and don't look back and focus and finish the race up front. You got your competitors breathing down your neck and one mistake and you're going back to fourth place. And we can't have fourth place. <laughs> I started on the pole, went through the first corner and all three other guys crashed piled up, so had a good qualifying, got lucky. I think everybody thinks they're good, but reality sooner or later kicks them in the ass and tells them, you know, you're not really that great. And it's starting to happen already here. He stayed in the lead and then made a little mistake and he just got by and that was it. The competition is fierce. With so much riding on every turn of the wheel, one mistake can lead to a one-way ticket home. And for some, that's simply not an option. I had to cover my side so he don't outbreak me. So I was defending myself. Yeah. These guys were so quick. Yeah. But it was awesome race. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable to have this opportunity. Yeah. Emotions run high as the competition comes to a close. From 53,000 down to 32. Now, 16 emerge victorious. This has been a dream for me, you know, before, you know, playing uh, Gran Turismo 3 and 4, thinking, hey, what if they found a bunch of sim racers and tried to put them in real cars and see what they could do? And it was always just kind of like a, just a, a dream that everyone thought it was kind of ridiculous for thinking. We all worked hard, made sacrifices, put in countless hours to get here. To have a competition that's absolutely going to be changing somebody's life. It's something I can't thank Sony and <laughs> Nissan enough for. You know, it's awesome. Ride my tongue, swallow the pain, a bit disturbed by these displays now. Everyone standing here is beating the odds. They're the cream of the crop. You're on your way to Silverstone. From here, it's on to Silverstone and the final phase of GT Academy. Will they have what it takes, both mentally and physically, to race real cars at breakneck speeds? Watch to find out who will become the first North American GT Academy champion when GT Academy premieres on the Speed Channel this fall.